No! A stormy oh, bracket! Six Feet Under is an HBO TV show that lasted from 2001 to 2005, five seasons long, 63 episodes, and it's a show that I had heard a lot about. It's a TV show that is about a dysfunctional family as they are in a funeral home and all the ins and outs of that with what they're dealing with as well as their everyday life drama. This is a TV show that has a lot of critical acclaim as well as audience acclaim. So I went into it very much so excited as well as the fact that if you're new to the channel, you should know this. I'm a huge fan of HBO. I think that they always know how to hit a home run essentially because they give a lot of insight. They have a lot of themes and messages that honestly are very insightful and give a little bit more insight to life which I love, honestly. Um, but this is also a TV show that a good friend of mine, Brian R. Cabot, shout out to you, who has it as his favorite TV show. So I always have it where every single summer I choose a TV show that usually is five to eight seasons long, and I decide to binge watch it and finish it by the end of the summer. Six Feet Under, I started it in June of 2020, and I ended it in terms of finally finishing the finale in February of 2021. And I know what you're thinking. Why would you spend eight months to watch it? Why not finish it in like a month or so? Truth be told, it's because I wanted to take my time with it. As I was watching it, I realized I should really have it where I watch it sporadically because these are characters that are dealing with things. And honestly, you know, it's mundane life tasks. So I really should kind of expand on it in terms of making it last. And I'm glad that I did because as I'm talking about these characters, the Fisher family is the heart and soul of this TV show, and they are great. You are fully invested with them. You love them. You hate them at times. It's great. It's fully human because how many times do family and friends annoy you where it's like one moment you're like, oh, man, I can't believe you did that. And the next moment you're like, man, I love you. And it's just it's great. It's it's great to see unconditional love on display. And honestly, the chemistry between all these actors and actresses are great. Um, I just love everything about these characters because it really does feel organic with how they present these characters. They are all dealing with things in their life. They're all dealing with trauma. They're all dealing with everyday mundane tasks that are at hand. And it's great to see with everything that goes on in the show how they handle it. And every single arc, honestly, is very satisfying, which is also something that's very important to me. And it hits the nail in the coffin in terms of like being amazing. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention in terms of these characters is that the acting. The acting is great across the board. There's not a single performance that I thought was bad. It's really good to see a lot of these characters. And honestly, with these actors playing them, they do such a convincing job. I loved it. The dialogue is also very natural flowing, which really does match the characters, but there's not really any moments I can think of where I'm like, yeah, this, this feels very artificial. It always feels very much so fitting to what the characters and the story is trying to say. Which, speaking of the story, the story is also very intriguing. I mean, I felt like I really learned a lot with the show about the funeral home industry, as well as just how people deal with this. I mean, for crying out loud, every single episode starts with a death. Um, it shows a title card of like the year that they were born and the year they died after seeing, you know, how they died. And at first you're kind of like, oh, some of these deaths are really hard to watch. But as the series progresses, you kind of get used to it. And I feel like that's really trying to showcase how these are characters that have to deal with this everyday life. So they are used to it. And that's why, not going to spoil anything, but that's why when a character does die, that does mean a lot to you at the end of the show it really hits home, man. It gives you perspective. Like, I couldn't help but think about how so many times in life I heard about a death or, you know, I had a family member I wasn't close with, and that person died, and it was like, oh, that's that's a shame. It's, it's, it's very saddening. And then you just move on, like, real quickly. But I haven't personally had a death that was, like, really close to me. And just watching the show, it really gave me perspective how, well, when you do – those deaths that you experienced previously in terms of like people dying that you weren't close to, it really kind of recontextualizes that because it's like, oh, dang, like death is like always right around the corner. You never know when that's going to happen. And I love the themes and messages about how cherish the time that you have here on earth. Do what you want to do, because at the end of the day, you have the time here on earth as it is. And it's like, you want to make that time worth it. And that's what I love about the show. Alan Ball, he's great. I mean, for crying out loud, he wrote one of the best screenplays ever with American Beauty. And here he creates a show that is just so 
three-dimensional. And I think it's great also with how progressive he made the show. And I know that that's a, you know, a word that's like a trigger for a lot of people these days, but hear me out about this. I mean, this is a show that, again, it came out like nearly 20 years ago, like in terms of like when it started. And this is a show that has LGBTQ characters and minority characters, and they are seamless in terms of how they're in incorporated with the show as it should be. I feel like a lot of shows, not necessarily HBO shows, because they've always been ahead of the curve, always. And I know I'm jerking off HBO, but what can I say? They're amazing. But a lot of cable TV shows, such as like NBC, CBS, you know, the list goes on. They just don't know how to incorporate it to where it actually feels natural. But with these shows, such as Six Feet Under, it's great to see these characters, as well as how they're dealing with these events and everything. I mean, you are seeing... Keith and David deal with the everyday life and struggle of LGBTQ individuals. And it's very saddening to see, but at the same time, it gives me insight and perspective, which I think is important. And same can be said with, you know, characters such as Diaz. I mean, these are characters that, you know, you feel as though you might have seen at some point in your life, as well as it's, it's crazy to see that not much has changed, but at the same time, hopefully change will happen. And I know I'm kind of getting off tangent, but it's just, it's great to see a show that tackled this and was way ahead of the curve. The other thing I wanted to mention, obviously, besides the themes and messages, is that this is a show that, <sighs> filmmaking-wise, it's great. It's not amazing, but the cinematography is really well handled. I do wish it was juiced up a little bit more, but the camera angles are really, really well done. Um, there wasn't a single angle or a single perspective where I was like, ah, that wasn't handled really well. It's done really well. Title sequence and the score itself are also really good. Unfortunately, Thomas Newman didn't do the score as a whole for the show, but he did do the title sequence, and the title sequences are honestly amazing. Every single episode I watch the title sequences because it's beautiful, man. It's really well handled. Um, the other thing is, like I said, it's a, it's a well-made show, but it also is a show that sounds really good. Um, which is something that, you know, you don't really hear too much in terms of like someone saying about a TV show, but it does sound really good. Um, also the plotting of the show is really good. There are some times where I can't lie in terms of negatives. There are some times where it almost teeters into like soap opera or like, you know, comedy skit type things where it's like, eh, but when I say that, I mean that I believe it's season three four is when characters kind of have it where it's more laid back there's not as much drama per se and things are kind of laid back and sometimes it teeters almost into melodrama almost but it doesn't fully and season four honestly i don't hate i actually think it is a good season and it's nice to have that laid back approach because then when season five happens it makes more sense in the context of things and you're like ah they were getting us comfortable and then they're like eh, here you go season five Season 5 is amazing. Season 5 contains the best finale. One of the best, I should say. I'm not going to lie. I watched the series finale like 20 minutes ago. And it's it, it, it it's beautiful, man. It, it, it It's something else. I, I don't even really know how to put into words. But like, as I mentioned, with one of the characters' deaths, it, it really recontextualizes things. But it gives you that grieving time. It gives you that time to grieve as well as to try to move on. But at the same time, still think about that character that died. And then there's this beautiful 10-minute sequence to end the show. And it is some of the best visual storytelling I think I have ever seen. And for the love of me, it really got me emotional, man. It, I see why it has a 9.9 .9 out of 10 on IMDb. It's so... It's so beautiful, man. It really is. And I know I'm like a broken record because so many other people have talked about it. But, man, it really hits home the messages and the themes in such a great way. It's It really does give you perspective, man. It's it's so well handled. It really is. You know, it's something that I can easily see myself rewatching, you know, many times over because it, – it, it almost like feels like it changed me, you know, like I don't really know how to say it other than that. Um, but again, in terms of because I want to get to negatives in terms of negatives, there really isn't much per se other than I do feel like, again, sometimes it almost does feel like it teeters into like that melodrama soap opera territory sometimes because when this show came out, it was in between 
like errors, I felt like. Because before The Sopranos and before Oz, you had it where TV shows had it where it was like a sitcom format. Where it was like, hey, these plots and story elements don't really matter. Or, oh, these characters are going to be doing things that are so crazy. And then, you know, it doesn't really matter in the long run of things. And this is a show that's not like that per se. But I feel like it does have a couple of those elements. Um, not too, too much, but it does have a couple of those elements that... Later, HBO shows would end up kind of filtering out fully, so that way it was more of, like, to the grind. And I'm not saying that this is a show that doesn't show its seams. It doesn't. It really doesn't show its seams. But it's definitely a show that you can see certain elements of, like, melodrama. And it's something where, for me as a viewer, I see that and I do kind of criticize it. But at the same time, as a whole, this is a really good show. Um, I did the math, um, you know, because on IMDb I did rate each season. And... With all the seasons combined, I gave it like an 87%, and that's in between my rating scale. And you know what? I decided that I'm going to lean more towards, you know, like a higher rating because of that finale alone. So for me personally, six feet under, I'm going to be giving it a 87%, which is like a four point, I don't know, like three, five, but I'm going to bump it up to a four and a half out of five, which there's like a hot sauce rating. It's the good old Tabasco rating. So it's a great show, man. It really is good. Um, and that finale, I say personally, even if you don't like the series, at least watch the 62 episodes. So that way you can get to that sweet, sweet 63 episode where the finale just really is something to behold. And something that it's why I watch film and TV shows. That's all there really is to be said. Um, yeah, so Six Feet Under, guys, uh, I could talk all day about this show because, again, I'm trying to condense 63 episodes into, like, a 10-minute review, but I could talk all day on this. If you have any questions about the show, feel free to ask below, but for me, I'm definitely saying it's worth your time. It's got great characters, um, an interesting story that really hooks you, messages and themes way ahead of its time, and honestly just really meditates about the facts of life as well as just, you know, death around you and how it can affect you or, you know, lack of effect, but... Yeah, six feet under, guys. I'm curious. What are your thoughts on it? Did you like it? Did you not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Look at the subscription, notification bell, and I'll catch you guys later.